Republican Senator Mitt Romney will not be seeking re-election after his current term end in 2025. The 76-year-old cited his age as the motivating factor. He released a video on X yesterday announcing he will retire from the Senate. Let's watch. At the end of another term, I'd be in my mid-80s. Frankly, it's time for a new generation of leaders. They're the ones that need to make the decisions that will shape the world they will be living in. Speaking to reporters later in the day on Wednesday, he said it's time for a new generation to take over, one that doesn't include either Biden or Donald Trump. Let's listen. I think it would be a great thing if both President Biden and former President Trump were to stand aside and let their respective party pick someone in the next generation. Uh, President Trump, excuse me, President Biden, when he was running, said he was a transitional figure to the next generation. Well, time to transition. Uh, David Ignatius this morning made a strong argument uh, that we should see that kind of a change. I think both parties would be far better served if, uh, if they were going to be represented by uh, people uh, other than those of us from the baby boom generation. Meanwhile, former President Trump, who Romney voted not once but twice to impeach, relished Romney's retirement, writing on Truth Social, quote, Mitt Romney, sometimes referred to as Pierre Delecto, will not be seeking a second term in the U.S. Senate where he did not serve with distinction. A big primary fight against him was in the offing, but now that will not be necessary. Congrats to all. Make America great again. Congrats to all, yes. Uh, I guess it's nice to hear someone in the federal government acknowledge age as a factor in getting ready to sort of leave public life in Washington, D.C. amid all these other senators, uh, Romney's colleagues, that seem unwilling to release their stranglehold clause uh, from the grip of power. But I don't know necessarily, you know, as Trump pointed out there, that this was entirely uh, a decision that was made in order to hand the reins to the next generation and may have had something to do with every other Republican basically in Utah uh, considering a primary bid against him. Jessica, what do you think uh, about his decision? Is it all good or is it a little bit self-serving to avoid getting maybe uh, Liz Cheney'd, for lack of a better term? Yeah, I, I really think Donald Trump in this case has to make this argument so that it's not about age. Because I think with Romney, it makes sense that it's about age. He's going to want to spend time with his grandkids. He's going to want to retire. He's someone who got done uh, what he could get done of what he wanted to in his political career. And he had a long one and by many metrics, a successful one, regardless of if you agree with his policies. But I think this is the kind of scenario where he's leading by example. We need more members of Congress. We need more people running for the highest political office in our country to just retire instead. It's insane. I mean, Romney seems that he's not experiencing cognitive decline. And I think it's appropriate to retire perhaps before you reach that point, but there are folks still running and Nancy Pelosi just announced her reelection bid. And it's like, y you all should be retiring. I mean, Diane Feinstein being pushed around in a wheelchair, Mitch McConnell's recent freezing up. Members of Congress are too old. We have the oldest Congress in history and we have Biden and Trump running for president. Of course, the response is going to be the defensive one. Well, he's just saying that because he would lose anyway. Because, of course, we shouldn't live in a country where people retire before they're too old to have the cognitive awareness necessary to serve in public office. I mean, the American people deserve better than people who should be in retirement homes. Yeah, I believe it was uh, Nikki Haley who discussed how the Senate was the most privileged nursing home in the country. Uh, and it, it raised, there's a lot of more debate, I think, lately about the age of our politicians and whether or not there should be new requirements on how old you can be, how long you can serve. Um, and I wonder you know, where that's actually going to go, because obviously there's a lot of discussions about things like this. But when the ultimate decision might be up to the very people who are clinging to power, it seems like those sort of policy proposals aren't actually going to go anywhere. And I wonder what your opinion is, uh, whether it's age limits or term limits, if you think that's actually a feasible way that would help this system, or if that would just be another sort of politicized weapon eventually used to try to brush people aside, uh, and maybe one side has more to lose than the other. 
If there's one thing that our Congress has been bad at historically, it's iterating on policy to make it relevant for the current time. So I think about, yeah, we should have age limits. Absolutely. But then I think about medical technology and how much it's advanced in the last 50 to 100 years. And I imagine a Congress that simply refuses to increase the age limit once we experience, you know, longer lifespans in the United States, thanks to medical advancements. Perhaps there's a cure for Alzheimer's and people are able to do their jobs for longer and want to. Uh, That would be a scenario that maybe we should increase the age limit, but will members of Congress decide to increase the age limit? Maybe if a significant portion of them are approaching on that age limit, I can understand the argument for term limits as as well. Uh, You have to get done what you have to get done in these years. Keep good on your campaign uh, promises. It's not like you're going to keep collecting lobbying money and make policy that will influence stock futures in a direction that benefits you. I can see the, the arguments for term limits, but I think the better stop on a lot of those things is campaign finance reform, and it's going to be a prevention of insider trading among members of Congress. And I think that there are some members of Congress that are beloved, that are some of the most popular in the country. Bernie Sanders is one of the most popular politicians, has served many consecutive terms, and his constituents are quite happy with him. So I I tend to be on the side that maybe term limits for members of Congress the the best thing, maybe for the Supreme Court, though it is. Interesting. And I I do think it's interesting when you look at the other laws that Congress has passed in its history that add age limits to things such as being able to fly commercial airplanes. You know, they are willing to put an age limit on that, uh, but not on their own ability to serve. And it's curious if they think somebody is too old to safely fly uh, aircraft with 150, 200 people behind them, uh, but they think it's fine to continue serving. Um, There's a new survey out that shows Americans want age limit eligibility uh, requirement for presidential candidates. And according to a Quinnipiac poll, six in 10 Americans, both Republicans and Democrats, support an age cap for those running for president. Meanwhile, 60% of Democrats and 57% of Republicans approve of that, and 66% of independents do too. Uh, So it's a rare moment where we have seemingly unity among the different sort of warring sides right now. Uh, Do you think that the will of the American people will translate into actual action? No, I don't. I think so many times we see these policies that are popular among the American people, you know, higher wages, better benefits. Universal health care was quite popular for some time. Unions are extremely popular in the United States right now. We don't see anyone's political ambitions or preferences now reflected in our democracy. And so our democracy is in in a lot of trouble when we see that. We see that abortion as an issue. Many people don't believe in a total ban on abortion, but there are so many popular candidates running for president right now that are for a six-week ban. And so that shows that it doesn't have to be a popular policy for someone to get elected if they support it. And I can understand the perspective of perhaps leaders don't just follow what the consensus want. Uh, They define the consensus. And I think about, okay, that's a a great thing in the case of Martin Luther King Jr. and the fight for civil rights. He was an incredibly unpopular, unpopular figure when he was active. And so much so that many people believe he was killed for his activism. Now, when we think about a figure like that, it seems very justified. But when we think about other political issues like abortion, like better wages, like having term limits and changing our political system so that it works so we don't have members of Congress who are senile or on the edge of it. I think it makes sense there. And so I can see both sides of it. But I think in most cases, I'm more on the side of popular democracy, uh, especially when it comes to something that could be such a simple one line policy of no one may serve beyond this age. Uh, It seems very straightforward to me. I do think it's important, uh, like you were mentioning, to have a Congress that doesn't just allow sort of uh, tyranny of the majority of the American people and what they want, but of course they always seem to do whatever it takes uh, to oppose anything coming after their own power. And I suspect this is a conversation that will not be going away anytime soon, but we will have more rising right after this.